Morning guys. If you've been following the Wild Eye Photo Chat blog over the last while, you will have picked up a tendency or a trend, if you will, that we're picking a theme for the week and that culminates in our Be Inspired post on our Facebook page where last week, for example, we looked at elephants and we shared some elephant shots. We asked you to share some elephant shots. Nice way to get the sharing going. Look what people can do with the same theme. Now, this week we are looking at Lightroom and the power of this amazing program and what you can do with it, specifically with wildlife photography in mind. So on Friday afternoon, we were sitting in the office discussing black and white and when to take images to black and white and how to take them to black and white using Lightroom. And we got into a very deep, long discussion on how you need to process for your vision. There's no good just taking any image to black and white and hoping it's gonna look better. It's crap, it doesn't work that way. Making an image black and white is not gonna make it a fine art image. It could just be rubbish. So what we looked at is, if you're out in the field and you know you're going to do something in black and white, you can then already start the process by shooting for your processing. Yeah? You're not just going to punch your stuff into Lightroom, hope for the best, hit V, which is your shortcut, takes it to black and white and it's going to work. It doesn't work. So when you're out in the field, you can take that first step to start the process to a proper black and white image. So, I'm going to bounce you to Lightroom and just give you the example of what I mean of shooting for your processing. And remember, we're speaking specifically black and white now. So, if you look in here, Lightroom, these are two raw files, untouched, unedited. This is straight out of camera. So, on the left-hand side, what you'll see here, giraffe in the Masai Mara um, starting to feed on a tree. So, the thought was, okay, nice scene, it's typical Mara, it's a bit close, the horizon skews, not the greatest shot. but. As this giraffe started walking past, I saw the shot that was going to happen. He was going to come around to the other side, which would work better, and I knew this could be black and white. Why? The colors do not play such a big part here. You've got greens and blues, which on the color wheel, they're neighbors, which means it's quite a calm and peaceful image. But because of the clean background and the strong lines, almost a symbol, if you will, of Kenya, um, I thought, let me go black and white. So when this giraffe then walked past, I overexposed the shot on the right-hand side by three stops. Right. I didn't change any settings. My ISO aperture, all of those things still stayed the same. I just used the um, exposure compensation and pushed it by three. So watch what happens. If I take my one on the left, just to show you, um, if we take, this is the original, the first one now, if we overexpose this by three, and we go back here, you see. So I could have done this after the fact in Lightroom, but remember this. If we look at, let's take this one back. So now I've got both of these is three stops overexposed, brighter, yes? If I take this one back and we just make that zero again, so this one currently in Lightroom, it says to me exposure zero because that's how I shot it. My bright version will always also give me exposure zero because that's how I shot it. Even though I overexposed, I'm starting from scratch on here. That's how I like to work. What that means is I still, in this version which I have overexposed, I still have five stops of play either way yes if I take my dark version and I have to get it on the same playing field as the other one I have to go to three I've only got two stops left so by overexposing you're leaving yourself more room in your raw data to process that image all right so what you could do from there because now this is let's just check okay that is my raw untouched didn't do anything to it if I just take that straight to black and white and I play with my blacks a bit I'm almost at some kind of interesting thing. I'm not, the point is not to process this, just to kind of show you how you would go about it. That is what I saw in my mind. And instead of having to come and faff around with it in Lightroom afterwards, I shot for processing. Right, great way to think because you're gonna have more power with your raw files when you do that. Right, so let's go back to those two. So, the original file could have worked as black and white, but I might have to process it more. But having that vision and shooting for processing, it's so much easier. Now, let's take that same thing and look at a black and white. Let's go to this guy. Right, leopard from the Sabi Sands. Let me just double check. Yes, that is unprocessed, raw, nothing done to it. It is a little bit underexposed. Why? Because my very bright backgrounds, obviously, I, I was on matrix um, or full frame evaluative metering on here. Bright background means the, the camera would have brought the entire exposure down to try and compensate for that background, which means my cat's also a bit dark. So, Mike. We said on Facebook, this took me about two minutes from this image to a nice sepia, um, like, I don't like fine art print, people use it too easily, but a nice monochrome version of this. So, time starts now. What I would do here, take the exposure up a bit, so I'm, I'm not worried about the background because I'm going black and white. Once I'm happy for my cat, 
V takes me to black and white. R takes me to crop, X changes the orientation. I can now recompose over here until I'm happy. Boom. All right, that's looking quite nice. Now I can work on the finer detail, lift the shadows a bit, maybe punch the contrast a bit so I just get a nice punch. When I'm happy with this, split tone, you get that CPA in, you go to split tone, you marked it a very nice uh, blog post on this as well a while ago on adding warmth to images. Same idea. You choose highlights, you get to a nice orange, and you just punch your saturation up a bit. Guys, a bit red. And you just find your right color, and there you go, before and after. Oh no, sorry, before and after is why. There you go. So that is how quick and easy it is. If you understand your raw files and understand what you can do to bring it back, black and white becomes easy. I did not shoot this leopard with the intention of going black and white, but when I'm sitting back, I'll process my solid images first, get them out the way. Then on a Sunday afternoon, I'll go play with my images and go through them and see, oh, this one might work as well. So um, that's a very, very quick look at what you could do in black and white and how shooting for your processing will help make that much, much stronger. A perfect example, this giraffe here, which was shot three stops over and then simply converted to black and white to get us to that. I can still go play more, but that's the idea. And also then to take that same principle over to the leopard, which came from a pretty underexposed area, or unexposed image, to something like that, which we can use. I can go and tweak this more by playing with a bit of the darks and the whites and all kinds of things, but overall, for a two minute job, that is not too bad. Anyway, so this whole week we're looking at Lightroom on the PhotoChat blog. Make sure you pop in Wild Eye's Facebook page, Wild Eye SA on Facebook, alternatively on the PhotoChat blog, where this whole week we're looking at Lightroom and how it can help your wildlife photography. My name is Jerry, this is PhotoChat for Wild Eye. I'll see you next time.